Hey there, friends. As most of us prepare for Easter Sunday tomorrow or whatever you celebrate on that particular day, the Biden administration has declared Easter Sunday as Transgender Day of Visibility. And an official proclamation was issued on Transgender Day of Visibility. We honor the extraordinary courage and contributions of transgender Americans and reaffirm our nation's commitment to forming a more perfect union where all people are created equal and treated equally throughout their lives. Well, of course, some people are treated more equally than others. A little bit of sarcasm there. But the White House seems more focused on trying to drive wedges than anything else. They have done everything they can to divide this country. They've done a pretty remarkable job of dividing this country. And they roll into what could be considered by billions of Christians worldwide one of the biggest religious holidays in the Christ or on the Christian calendar, Easter, by rubbing people's nose in it and taking that holiday and calling it something that is fake, transgender. The proclamation states transgender Americans are part of the fabric of our nation. I suppose they are. I do have a brown stain in my underwear, so I assume the fabric is definitely there as far as them being a part of it. But you'll notice where he talks about all the wonderful things that the Biden administration is doing for these trans people who have mental disorders. My administration is also providing dedicated emergency mental health support through our nationwide. Okay, let's stop right there. If he was truly providing mental health support, if it stopped right there, while I'm obviously not in support of his silly little proclamation, I could get behind that because these transgender people, according to the DSM-5 report, have a mental disorder. Their mental disorder is officially gender dysphoria. This is not a joke. They have legitimate mental disorders. Now, the problem I have with this silly little proclamation is it doesn't stop at mental health. They're not trying to provide actual help to these people who are pretending to be another gender. They literally can look down in their nether regions and see something and pretend to be something that they're not, even though they are really actually looking at the stuff that makes them whatever gender they are. It's just a scientific fact. These people run from science whenever they don't want to use it, and then they claim science in areas where it's not real science. This is real science, and they are denying this. But my problem with them saying mental health support, they go on to say our nationwide suicide and crisis lifeline. So they're giving up on these people already. In other words, they're never offering anything on the front end of this to help them cope with the mental disorder that they have. So they're not trying to help them. They're celebrating them. They're saying, yay, we see you. And then they're saying, okay, well, if you decide you want to kill yourself, then this is where you call. Wait a minute. Shouldn't there be a line available to these people before that? I've said this on videos before. Sometimes when these people speak out, I'm talking about the trans community, the people pretending to be something they're not. How do we know that they're not crying for help? How do we know that's not their cry for help when they go public or they go get boisterous and loud about what they are? You know, sometimes people have their own way of crying for help. When we ignore that way for crying for help, you know what happens? They end up calling a suicide hotline, or they don't call it, and they just go do it. That's the problem here. We are not trying to help these people. We're trying to help them after they've already gone down that road. This is useless. There's no point in this. If you're not trying to offer them any help, when they're crying for help, they're coming to you saying, I need help. And you go, yay, look at you. Look what you are. I recognize you and I'm so proud of you. You're so courageous. They're probably looking at you going, dude, I literally just cried for help to you. And instead of you trying to help me, you're celebrating my mental disorder. Then if you look at the last sentence here, this is, uh, you know, this isn't Biden. This is that little token hire that they have at the press conferences that probably wrote this, I continue to call on the Congress to pass the Equality Act to codify civil rights protections for all... Okay, there's literally civil rights for every race, gender. This is not a new subcategory of people who are not covered under civil rights. Civil rights 
whether you're a man or a woman or a different type of race. Civil rights has you covered, right? The Civil Rights Act does. This is not a new category that somehow wasn't included. The people that they're talking about, about codifying a new form of civil rights for these types of trans people who have mental disorders, they would already be covered as a woman, as a man, as a black, Hispanic, Asian, white. They are literally covered by the Civil Rights Act now. This is all window dressing. This is just to say, look what we did, whenever it does nothing new. It doesn't do anything but recognize something and give you a reason to celebrate. Why would you celebrate something that is already taking place? These people are already protected. Now, most of this got kicked off and it started from the next Benedict suicide that took place a couple of weeks ago. There was a statement from the White House on March 14th, statement from President Joe Biden on Next Benedict. Jill and I are heartbroken by the recent loss of Next Benedict. Every young person deserves to have the fundamental right and freedom to be who they are and feel safe and supported at school and in their communities. Next Benedict, a kid who wanted to be accepted, should still be here with us today. The kids should still be here with us today. I agree with that. But nobody tried to help this girl. And just so you know, this was a girl transitioning to be a boy. And I say transitioning, she was pretending to be a boy. But in Oklahoma, the school system says you have to use the bathroom of whatever you were born as. Science! So this person next, who was pretending to be a boy, still had to use the girl's bathroom. This person next was the real bully. The White House is trying to say that next was being bullied. Guess what happened? This girl, pretending to be a boy, went into the girl's bathroom. There were other girls in there probably talking, snickering, whatever, as kids do. This person next, this girl, pretending to be a boy, splashed water on the other girls. Then a fight ensued. Let me repeat that. This person next drew first blood, if you will, and then complained about getting her ass kicked, right? No sympathy here. None. Zero. Not a bit of sympathy here. You've, you you effed around, you found out. But guess what? They're trying to make it look like this girl died of her injuries. She did not. Not only did she not die of her injuries, they're now wanting to reclassify this as a suicide because it was a toxicology report that revealed that there was a drug in her body that killed her. So she either OD'd accidentally or on purpose. Either way was not a result. In fact, the autopsy states very clearly that the death was not a result of any of the injuries that she got during her fight in the bathroom after she picked the fight and sprayed water on the other girls. Now, why do I bring this up? The timing of this, right? So the Biden administration is celebrating a suicidal person who pretended to be a gender that they were not, picked a fight with somebody else, then OD. All things we should not be celebrating, but they're celebrating her. And they're in fact christening her with this transgender day of whatever. Do you know what we also are right in the middle of? Three days ago, one year ago, was the Nashville shooting, the Covenant shooting, where three Christians, three Christian children, and three Christian adults were murdered by a trans person. So we're looking at almost the one-year anniversary. Not a peep out of the White House or the Biden administration about those six Christians who were killed by a trans, but oddly enough and coincidentally enough, we're now celebrating at the exact same time one year later trans people. Is this a thumb at the nose at Christians? Is this a way to try to instigate? Is the White House picking a fight? Is that what they're doing? Because we've seen the White House say that Christians are the bad guys. We've seen the White House say that anyone, in fact, wasn't it the banks that were told that if you see the word Holy Bible in any kind of transaction to report these people? So the White House is, has been very clear that Christians are the bad guys and Christians need to be looked out for. Is this their way to push Christians over the edge to take the weekend that is likely Christians' biggest celebrating weekend for their particular religion and to crap all over it 
with not only something that's completely not Christian, but to push it in their face that a trans person who pretended to be something else killed Christians last year, yet make no mention of those Christians who were killed, and then celebrate the mental disorder of the person who actually killed them. I truly, in my heart, after reading all of this proclamation and all of this stuff about the White House, I truly and honestly believe that the White House did this on purpose to try to push people over the edge. I believe they feel like this is what could do it because they want you doing something. They want you to, we saw yesterday the video, video that I put out, they want you to lash out on social media. They want you to say something negative. They want you to get violent, whether it's verbally violent or physically violent. That's what they want. What better way to do that than the crap on a billion people's biggest religious holiday of the year? You know who you don't see them doing this on? Muslims. <laughs> you notice how they don't do that? They'll crap all over a Christian holiday like they're doing here. But they stay way far away from those Muslim holidays. Just saying. Just saying. In fact, Tennessee has their own Trans Day of Vengeance again. Remember they had it last year called Trans Day of Vengeance a week after the Nashville trans pretender, gender pretender shot up that um, school? They're doing it again. Trans Day of Vengeance. They're holding this this coming week. So there you go. A little bit more celebrating. And again, no memorials, nothing regarding the Covenant school shooting in any kind of way. It's like they're celebrating the shooter and not the victims at this point. Now I'm going to share one more thing with you before we end this video that may be troubling for some people to talk about. We'll definitely more than likely get this video taken down by YouTube, but I'm going to do it anyway because this is important to me. And I feel like the White House purposely and sometimes mistakenly misses opportunities all the time to do real help because there is a way they could actually really help the troubled children out there. This person we just spoke of that kind of triggered all of this trans day of proclamating, yay, look what you did for me kind of stuff. The person we talked about, the next Benedict person, this person, again, was a girl pretending to be a boy, was physically and definitely not a boy, but pretended to be. Again, gender dysphoria, a legitimate mental disorder, in the world of people who use science. What they're not telling you, and this may be what is left out in the conversation, is more important than what's actually being stated. This is why I feel for this person. This is why I truly feel for this girl. Not because of what she pretended to be. Not because she was heralded as some kind of hero for acting like something that she was not. They talk about this girl and state how she was bullied and how you should feel sorry for her because she was trans and all this kinds of stuff. You know what they don't talk about is the very fact that her biological father raped her. Nobody's talking about that. Why would the Biden administration and the White House pass up an opportunity to try to bring awareness to abuse children who are being sexually abused every single day, every single hour across this great country of ours. Why would the Biden administration not do that? If they're not trying to pick a fight with us or they're not trying to pick a fight with Christians, then what is the motive? Because you've got the trans people, the gender pretenders that are a portion of a percentage of people in this country. In fact, the other alphabets in the LGBTQABC don't even accept the T in the LGBT, right? Most of them don't anyway. I've talked to them. They don't. Look in the comment section of this video after you see it. You're going to see it. There's gay people that follow this channel that say, we don't support what these people do and what they think and how they act. So you have less than 1% of the population that's afflicted by this sickness that these people have, right? Look at these numbers here. More than 600,000 children are abused in the U.S. each year. Let that sink in. That's not just 600,000 people one time, and that's a portion of our population. That's 600,000 every single year. Every year this happens. There are children being molested and raped across this country, and some 
right now as we speak. So the number of victims and the number of people associated with this horrible crime of sexually abusing these children is far larger than any amount of numbers on the gender pretending side. Wouldn't it have been better served for the White House to proclaim something? They could still use their poster child of next Benedict to do this because this person was raped. They could be making this about protecting children going forward. Their little proclamation is simply an act and it protects nobody because it's nothing more than a poster or a t-shirt or a bumper sticker slogan. This was one of the biggest missteps and screw-ups by this White House that I can remember. They missed an opportunity to help children who are hurting and being hurt right now. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.